Happy Arvo. I think I got to start coming in, like, not from off camera, because my camera has been struggling to focus lately when I do that. Hello? Hello? Okay, anyway. Woo! Wow, look at that number. Wow. Yay. I wish I could hear everybody, everybody clapping. I just hear nothing. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for subscribing. 50,000. I like that number. I like that number. Woo! <laughs> um, <laughs> and how are we going to celebrate? Well, with a video from Learn English by Pocket Passport. I like that channel name. That's catchy. Learn English by Pocket Passport. What is Pocket Passport? I have a lot of questions. Um... Why are we learning English? This is about Australia. Anyway, fun facts about Australia. I'm having fun today. Let's go. Good day, mate. And that was an abrupt ending. Welcome to Australia. Woo. Officially the common of though. Australia. Home to the kangaroo, the koala, the boomerang, and some of the most stunning coastlines you'll ever come across. You know, I, I, I guess you guys actually invented the boomerang. Is that right? I, I guess that's safe to assume, but I never knew that for sure. It's the largest country in Oceania and the sixth largest country in the world. Although it is the smallest continental landmass, it is, in fact, the world's largest <laughs> island. Just to compare... The UK. These are all some fun facts. Now, what makes it an island, though? Like, why is North America not the largest island? Isn't that... Like, why is Russia and China, like, that whole thing, that whole continent? Why isn't that an island? But congrats to Australia for that. It That's would fit cool. into Australia approximately 32 times. <laughs> the most surprising oh statistic, though, is Australia's population density. One of the lowest in the world. Only 26 million inhabit the country. That's around three people per square meter. Mo There's no way. Is that true? Three people per square meter? Guys, I think he meant square mile. <laughs> There's no way that you guys would be crammed in like sardines through the whole continent country that's around three people per square meter most hold on i'm fact checking this all right i've got the ai going which is clearly highly intellectual um there's about 0 0.000003 people <laughs> per square meter so it was a little bit off on the decimal most of the inhabitants are concentrated in or around the coastal areas of all the main states and territories. Made up of six states, New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia, mm -hmm. South Australia and Tasmania, Tasmania, and two territories, Northern Territory or NT. Okay, I did not know that. So that's not a state, Northern Territory. And Australian Capital Territory. And that's interesting too. So the wow, okay. Canberra's not actually in New South Wales. It's not considered part of that. Or ACT. Much of inland Australia is deserted. Though people mistakenly believe mm -hmm. Sydney to be the capital. Except for that golf course that lives there. It is in fact Canberra, which is in southeastern Australia. I was one of those stupid people. In ACT. Australia is almost 4,000 kilometers from east to west and 3,200 kilometers from north to south. A flight that would take approximately... I'm trying to convert that to um, freedom units. <laughs> um, <laughs> I heard that the other day. I thought it was funny. Mentally 4.5 hours each way. Generally, the north is hot and tropical, while the south is subtropical or temperate with most rainfall happening around the coast. There is even... I feel like most of the rainfall doesn't happen right here. Right here. 
them snow in southern Australia and Tasmania during the winter months. It's a little surprising, though. I would have thought the southern Australia was hotter. I don't know why. That's a really stupid thought, because this is closer to the equator, isn't it? I guess I'm just, like, stupidly thinking of it like America. Like, you go south in America, it gets hotter. It's the opposite in Australia. Months as Got one it. of the most ethnically diverse nations. Nearly a quarter of the country's inhabitants were born elsewhere, wow. making it the eighth largest immigration population in the world. Following That's actually sort of interesting. I don't think of Australia like it's incredibly ethnically diverse. I just that doesn't come to mind, but I wow, that's in World War II. That's cool. Australia promoted itself with a populate or perish slogan, urging foreigners to visit and eventually settle, mm. which most of them did. Now you have to be the king's cousin just to be considered. Firstly, from Britain, then Europe, and finally, Asia became the largest source of immigrants in the 21st century. The national language is English, though Aboriginal Australians have their own set of languages and customs. I've honestly never thought about the Aboriginal languages. Today, there are an estimated 400,000 Aborigines, or indigenous people That's of a lot. Australia. As a Shout out to any Aboriginals out there. Commonwealth of the UK. That'd be awesome if there's any Aboriginals watching. Australia's head of state is now King Charles III, who is represented by a governor general and a prime minister. Power is divided between the federal and state governments. Australia is a highly... It's so weird to think Charles has any anything to do with Australia on the other side of the world. ...developed country with a strong economy. 13th in the world, actually. An important exporter of agricultural goods such as wool, wheat, beef, fruit, and wine. I didn't realize wool. I mean, that makes sense. But There is also a need to import major items, most notably petroleum and crude oils, cars, phones, Cell computers, phones. and medicines. <laughs> the national sport of Australia is cricket during the summer and football during the... Okay, I was going to say... It's not AFL. Winter. Not football in the UK sense, but Australian football. I think it's the best football. Out of all three footballs, your guys' is, is it's something else. Which at first glance compares to rugby with the use of... And, and it uh, compares to Quidditch, too. ...hands as well as feet. As a result of their fantastic coastline, Australia is also famous for water sports. And you'll be hard pushed <laughs> to find a local who doesn't know how to surf. We couldn't possibly finish without talking about surfing's hard. Some of Australia's most famous landmarks. And I've never even tried. <laughs> Sydney Opera House. Of course. Located on the banks of Sydney Harbour. I reacted was designed to that. by a Danish architect. Oh. Took 14 years to construct and has become one of the most famous structures the world over. Yep, the Dorito chips actually can come together to form a sphere. Yep, yep. Right next know. to it is the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which is the tallest steel arch bridge in the world, and more than 150,000 vehicles cross it every day. <sighs> Finally, Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, is a massive sandstone formation situated almost dead center of Australia in the Northern hmm. Territory. Listed as an UNESCO World Heritage Site, Uluru is sacred to the... I don't know who UNESCO is. The Aboriginal people That's with cool. its abundance of springs, water holes, rock caves, and ancient paintings. With so much to see and do, <laughs> and so much ground to cover, Australia is a tourist paradise. What are you waiting for? Get yourself to the land down under. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Um, he makes it seem so easy just to catch a 14-hour flight to Australia for $3,000. Probably more, right? Anyway, that was a fun video. Um, go check out Learn English by Pocket Passport. Up-and-coming epic channel on YouTube. And thank you for watching. All 50,035 of you, although not all of you will watch this video. <laughs> but for those who did, thank you. I hope you guys are doing good.
Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? I'll see you tomorrow for this week in Australia. It's been a while.